Boris Gelfand, Shalom. Shalom. And welcome to Culture Buzz. Thank you. Boris, you are kind enough to host us at your home after returning from one of the greatest battles in modern chess competitions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I hope you appreciated the fight. We, we have followed it day by day. We crossed our fingers for you. And for us, you are the winner. Thank you. Thank Although you. you faced the great Anand, yeah. and you are now a great honor, and very uh, rightfully the world deputy champion of the world. How does it feel, Boris? Well, it feels great, but of course, okay, I was so close to win the match, but it's not like one match, it's like a summit of many years uh, career. I went for it, I went to quarterfinal, to semifinal. Finally, I managed to get to a match and uh, I was very close, so now I have to concentrate and try to do it next time. Amazing, amazing. And it was indeed a very special competition. We remember, for example, that it opened with a series of ties, of yeah. draws. Yeah. It seemed like you were even in your abilities. No, of course, this uh, kind of match is very uh, even and uh, especially both of the players devoted a lot of their time and energy for the last, let's say, half a year the only thought that both of us could have it's about the match and the big amount of preparation so it was difficult to get an initiative and it's a battle of the minds basically. Yeah, it's a battle of the minds it's a battle of the characters it's a battle of uh, attitude it's a battle of preparation and the surroundings this beautiful gallery in Moscow. Yeah, yeah, How was, was it for you? It was very impressive, especially I was uh, uh, brought up in Soviet Union. I spent the first 30 years, so this museum is uh, one of the uh, symbols of Russian culture. And uh, of course, when I was a kid, I was uh, visiting this museum many times. So it was like a dream come true to play in such a beautiful museum surrounded with such uh, famous pictures. And we are now uh, enjoying the London Olympics. Yeah. And we appreciate very much the efforts by all the athletes. And when I think about chess, your world, Boris, for quite a few years now, it requires lots of strength, both mentally and physically. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's life of a chess professional on the very top, that you have to devote uh, all your time and all your energy in uh, um, preparing for the tournaments which are to come and to recover from uh, your failures and go on. It's, uh, it's uh, very similar to other sports, but it's uh, different in a way that it's uh, a lot of mental effort also. So we will call it the Mind Olympics. Yeah, actually it, it goes also. Uh, for some reason chess is not part of Olympics, even though it was closed a couple of years ago, the uh -huh. decision to accept, but now uh, probably it would be in the future, who knows. It's just a policy of International Olympic Committee to not to allow us. But there is uh, mind sports and there are special games each year in Beijing, which chess is a part of. Mm, interesting. Uh, we know that the chess players prepare very hard for the battle, it's a strategy and all your experience comes yeah. together and you have a team of consultants, but when it comes to the game, you are there alone, yeah. basically. How do you how do you handle this pressure? Well, it uh, comes with experience because uh, if you speak about me, it's like around thirty years experience. But uh, it's more or less normal. I was uh, have some good friends who who are top level musicians, and they say it's the same. You 
you study, you train each day with a violin, and uh, when you go to a concert, it just gives you an ab different abilities. You are ready for everything. Very similar in chess, you prepare to be ready for different uh, change of events and different course of the game to be able to handle it well. And in addition to all the pressure and the uh, strong effort, unbelievable effort to win this prestigious title, one of the most prestigious yeah. in the world, yeah. the World Chess Champion. Yeah. In addition to that, you find yourself, if you want to, or if you don't want to, representing your country. Yeah, of course. Does it make it easier or more difficult? No, it just gives uh, extra positive emotions. So what, what did it mean for you, Boris Gelfand, who came to Israel as a new immigrant a few years ago? No, it gives a very good feeling that uh, you probably you can see on the internet the op magnificent opening ceremony of the match and uh, we hear Atikva and, uh, and Israeli flag all over and uh, in the center of Moscow Israeli flag was uh, in front of the museum for a whole month so it gives a very good feeling to represent your country, your own country. Boris, now you are the deputy uh, world champion in the world of chess. So the answer to the following question should be easier, easy for you. What can we wish Boris Gelfand in the future? No, you can wish me good luck because uh, in March of the next year uh, it would be a tournament of the eight best players and the winner would have a uh, right to challenge the world champion in the next match. Wonderful. It would be next March in London, uh, March, April. So you can wish me good luck in this competition. Of course and we do. And in the tournaments to come before. Of course we do, because all you need to do is go one step up. Yeah. No, first I have to win this tournament again. It's yes. Maybe it's even more difficult than to win a match. Okay. Because the uh, qualification is very tough. Eight best players okay. come once. I managed to win in uh, 2011. Hopefully 2013 I'll manage to do it again. I'll do my best and I'll put the effort, uh, all the effort possible. Yeah. And in the circuit of chess, in the branja, you probably know many of your rivals almost intimately. I know everybody. And you know, more important than that, you know the way they play and the way they think. Yeah. It's a bit scary knowing people that intimately. No, it's, uh, but it's very interesting because everybody is changing. Let's say, same players who is also work constantly, so you have to be very um, quick to think because the uh, way they were playing a year ago, Maybe this year they change their attitude and they change. Uh -huh, okay. You have to notice every little detail. And even so, let's say with Anand, uh, I played all in all maybe around 100 games. Wow. In my career, first was in 1989 when we were juniors. But uh, still for this match, I have to uh, look in you for all his career and all my career to see what's his attitude nowadays and what's his weakness nowadays. Amazing. Really amazing. Boris, I wanted to ask you, when you were growing up in uh, Belarus, yeah, in Minsk, in Minsk uh, and you started playing chess, who were your inspiration? Great chess players from the past. Uh, you know, I... I was studying the games of all the players, so I thought that it's a good idea not to look at one player, uh, and, but to study games of all great players of the past. But uh, I have to say that the games of one player influenced me especially. He never became world champion, unfortunately. His name was Aki Barubinstein. Okay. And he was uh, one of the best players beginning of the 20th century. And he had to play such a match for world championship title. But unfortunately, first world war broke up. 
So the match never took place. Where was he from? He was from uh, Poland, Polish. Uh, from Lodz. Okay. Uh, and uh, actually his first book he started chess was in Hebrew. Really? Yeah. Amazing. It's amazing. I saw this book at my friend's library a couple of years ago. Unbelievable. Boris, you the are book the was published in Vilna. In Vilna? Yeah, yeah I think. It Approxi- was approximately what uh, part of the century, of the 20th century? No, no, no. no. He played in the 20th century. It's an old book, probably of uh, 18th century or of, uh, something ah, like this. Wow, it's even Probably more, of 19th century. More amazing. Yeah. yeah. There are very few books on Hebrew. Okay, nowadays uh, there are some books. Yeah. We are waiting for your book. Yeah, yeah, my book is in English. Uh, it's published in English. It's uh, technically some a bit problematic to translate it into Hebrew, mm-hmm. but uh, basically it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Boris, you are the best person I know to ask the following question. When you look at world chess, when you look at Israeli chess, where do we stand? Well, it's... Uh, Different things, we are in different positions. We are quite good in training, so we have the best trainers in the world. We have some excellent players. Uh, and, uh, two last Olympiads, which are like Team World Ch- Championship, we won medals. We are the only team which uh, got medals in two consecutive, uh, consecutive Olympi- our latest Olympiads. Next, this month we go for the next Olympiad, we hope to be successful. But unfortunately, we are not so good in uh, money-wise because uh, chess-wise is uh, uh, chess life is very how to say we can say poor inside the country. There are no international competitions, almost no. Now it's getting a bit better, but uh, it's be- both because of lack of fundings and because of uh, lack of infrastructure. But I do hope that uh, it would get better. And uh, hopefully that my latest success, which arose a big interest, would uh, change the situation and will be one of the power countries in the chess, but also organizational-wise. And uh, the next question makes sense, after your wonderful accomplishment. Do you teach? No, I don't teach because uh, I'm very busy. You know, to play in such a level requires full dedication and uh, uh, virtually every day from morning to evening I'm preparing for well. the uh, next event, uh, next events, so I don't have time to teach, but uh, fortunately in, uh, we have a lot of uh, very high level trainers in the country, both for top level players, for talented juniors, for beginners. So we have very good, uh, in this case, we have very good, uh, uh, very qualified uh, trainers uh, in our Excellent, country. excellent. Is there a logical explanation why there are so many Jewish people amongst the great chess players all throughout well, history? There, there are different explanations and uh, one of them is that uh, A lot of them come from Soviet Union, where maybe it was one of the few ways for Jewish people to uh, get to the, let's say, the top of society. Yeah? Mm. It's, uh, but also, okay, so, uh, we have uh, always a century of traditions that uh, uh, parents are teaching kids to do something. And this ability to learn and to work is, uh, to work on something and to specialize on something it's uh, very useful in chess mm-hmm. so it's a combination of mentality and culture yeah and, and the, history and history, and history. Yeah. because everybody has different explanation but you see nowadays it's uh, a bit less mm-hmm. because probably the world is open to other possibilities. Anyway. So more people go, I don't know, to high tech or to some other... People don't have patience like they used to no, be, especially the young generation. Yeah, yeah, this is a problem, this is a problem. But still the computer can't beat the player. No, computer can beat. Actually. Can beat? Computer can beat really? The player, yeah. 
Actually, oh. these are sad news, Bobby. These are very sad things. Even a <laughs> computer which would play on your telephone will is strong enough. Unbelievable. Let alone on the average laptop. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And when you look at the world, at the map of the world, and you are to say or to indicate where are the strongest centers of chess today, bringing up the next excellent chess players, where would it be? It's hard to say because, of course, Russia, Russia is still the center, but you know, world became open, and also thanks to internet, the access to information became possible worldwide. So you can uh, be born in any village in middle of nowhere. Even in India? Even in, no, in India, now in India it's a boom after Anand. The last 10 years, uh, I don't know, millions of kids are playing chess and uh, parents are doing everything so to make the kids uh, good. Yeah? So this is the Anand effect. Anand effect. And we are waiting to see the Gelfand effect here in Israel. I do hope, I do hope, because it happened in many countries uh, through history, so I do hope. First of all, we should see uh, in September, in one month, how many kids, I'm curious, how many more kids would join chess uh, um, sections and chess uh, trainings. I'm uh, curious, but uh, also it requires a lot of work by sports ministry, by chess federation to organize it. Uh, serious investments in uh, infrastructure. Investment in infrastructure and uh, to give this uh, kids who would come the best possible uh, trainers to encourage them to stay in chess. But also nowadays trainers have became uh, possible through internet. You can live middle of nowhere and through internet you can have the best trainers in the world. Amazing. Uh, you can sit here on Skype. Technology. Uh, High-tech techno- chess. High-tech yeah. Tech chess. Yeah, yeah. Actually chess, uh, it's, a, it's a very big discussion in chess world. Because a lot of people are very skeptical that chess are not good, uh, not good enough to be on TV, for that reason. But for other reason, chess excellently matches with internet, because you can uh, put all the games and uh, it would be seen on internet and played all over and over. And you can take all the best lessons through internet privately, and you can download the lessons from internet, which are available for download. And we were able to watch your fantastic yeah. battle live, yeah, live on with, Facebook. Yeah, and also this, and also this. Uh, nowadays, uh, my match, you saw how good video was. You could see even uh, which pen I was writing and everything. Amazing. So Amazing. this technology changed the chess world. Also, you can play with everybody. You can sit here and play with a player playing in Alaska. In Alaska, I don't know, in a village in Philippines, I don't know. Wonderful. Any, any, any country in the world. Basically, even with the countries with which you don't have diplomatic relation, mm-hmm. you can play on the internet, nobody asks what's your name. You simply play, you log in with uh, some nickname. Chess, uh, chess is a peacemaker. Yeah, it's true, it's true, because uh, basically chess world is the one which uh, it doesn't have hostilities and... Uh, Chess game, it's kind of a thing which unites people, because uh, actually it's the same language, we speak the same language. Boris, this has been a special treat, talking to you, listening to you. I want to wish you all the best in the next competitions, and thank you for being such a wonderful chess player and such a wonderful person. Thank you so much, thank you for coming, it was my pleasure to speak to you, and uh, I hope that uh, our interview would uh, bring some more people to chess and uh, hopefully, let's say, in uh, 10, 20 years we'll see some junior which would be, uh, become, uh, who would represent our country in the very top uh, thanks to this uh, uh, latest event here. We join this wish of yours. Boris Gelfand, Tadaraba, Shalom. Tada, Tada, Shalom.